this week on launch. We're checking out spreadsheets.com because if you've got the cheddar for that domain, I'm interested. An easy way to build a help center on your website. And good news, I'm gonna show you how to never use Facebook Messenger again, all on an especially tasty edition of Launch for Accountants. More people are coming for our spreadsheets. Check this one out, spreadsheet.com. How's that for a domain flex? We've talked about a few new AG spreadsheets now, and they all have been centered on pulling integrations, live data from cloud services into a fairly standard spreadsheet experience. But this one is doing a little more. It's taking notes from Airtable. Now Airtable is a database system, which is very different than spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are kind of a bohemian freeform space where you can lay things out any way you like. And they're really the ultimate form of self-expression. Databases, on the other hand, they're on the other end of the spectrum, hyper-structured and for good reason. If you build automations around a data set, you wanna get data back that you expect a number or a date, not Mona Lisa's ear. So how is spreadsheet.com making these things coexist? Take a look, the all-in-one spreadsheet. One familiar tool with the power of a database and project management system. So it looks like it's in early access. This little carousel thing here is interesting. So you see bits of Airtable, you see bits of spreadsheet, you see kind of automation workflows. This just looks like Excel or Google Sheets, right? But here you've got something that has a section that's very clearly a database section. And this is, this is quite exciting. So when they say an all-in-one spreadsheet, I don't use multiple spreadsheets. I don't know what that means, but I think what they're getting at is more of a database approach. In fact, on the left-hand side here, you can even see a little icon for a database. So you can see where the database begins at row five and above that, it's a spreadsheet. And it's databases really that open up all sorts of cool stuff, like kind of Gantt charts like this. When that data is structured, you can build a bunch of stuff on top of it like forms. So it's got a little built-in form builder. And then this is interesting, kind of step-by-step -step logic for automating around your spreadsheet. This is pretty different than Airtable's built-in automations, which are just kind of linear. This actually gives you branching logic so you can see yes or no here, and then follow on steps based on that logic. Integrations, Slack, Teams, MailChimp, Gmail. Don't really understand how to use that. Pricing looks actually almost exactly like Airtable. So you got your free tier with row limits. Looks like you get version history and Gantt charts at standard, but premiums where most people are, are gonna be living. Says it's free until October 17th though. Seems pretty cool. It's gonna take something spectacular to pry Airtable from my cold dead hands, but this is probably my favorite web-based spreadsheet I've seen yet. Learn more about this one over at spreadsheet.com. A funding round for the leading no-code web app builder. 100 million big ones to enable software development for the masses, but I'm an accountant. Why does this matter? Because no-code development advisory is the new advisory. That's my take anyway. So what's all the hubbub about Bubble specifically? Let's take a look. The fastest way to build web apps without code. Over a million bubblers to date. That is a lot of bubblers. So probably my favorite thing about their site is the fact that the site itself is built in bubble. And you can click this button and edit it like live in the editor to get a taste for what building an app is like. So this is the full blown bubble editor. You'll see kind of the hierarchy on the left here is design, workflow, data, styles. Right now we're in the designer and you've got all these elements on the left-hand side you can pull onto the screen. I'm not gonna do that because I'll break it. And so this is the home page that we were just looking at. Now when it comes to designing a page, a static page like this, Bubble's probably not your best bet. Bubble's really for building apps, things that are working off of some underlying data set. We've looked at like Notion or Type Dream, stuff like that's gonna be a little easier to visually design pages. But if you're looking to build a full-on app, Bubble's kind of the tool that most people have settled on. So one of the things they've got here that I like is the showcase. Gives you an idea of the kind of stuff people have already built on top of Bubble. So you got Air Dev here. So all very nice kind of visually designed pages. The cooler thing though is like getting into the app logic. Here you go. Here's one that'll actually do some heavy lifting. So booking, excursions. Here you've got all the excursions grouped by location, what type of excursion they are. Click into them and you're gonna get like a purchase page to book an excursion. This is the kind of thing that would have been like unbelievably hairy and costly to build in the past. Now you can build completely without code on top of something like Bubble. Pretty neat. Now, I think this stuff matters to accountants because when we get to a point where anyone can build software, which is kind of the inevitable 
place that we're gonna get to. In the past, computers first came around, that stuff was nasty. It keeps getting simpler, more accessible for developers. The destination is anybody can make software. When we get there, the people who are gonna win are the people that understand the problems worth solving. That's not developers who've just done development, it's advisors, it's accountants. People like us that understand the nitty gritty and are actively working with the people that have big problems that need solving. That's what gets me excited about this kind of thing. So learn more about this one over at bubble.io. We've got another Notion tool, this time for building a simple help center on your website. How many firms right now do you think have their own help centers? We surveyed firm owners recently and they don't. This just isn't a thing people are doing. But the value of a help center is to answer those repeat questions you get again and again. Blog posts are great for answering repeat technical questions. But what about everything else? The more kind of nuts and bolts questions. Well, Hoppa. The Hoppa. Yeah, the Hoppa. The Hoppa. 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 The Hoppa. The Hoppa. Is gonna make this super easy for you. Basically, you pound out a simple support page in Notion, which by the way is free and the tool I use to manage my life. And Hop is gonna give you a really nicely structured support center. I'll show you. So here's your Notion page. It's just six pages listed out in two columns. It's gonna turn it into a help center that can be embedded on your website. Now this works with virtually any web builder, even the really simple ones like your Squarespaces. They've got embed blocks where you can drop anything that you want into there. And the result is something really kind of nice, polished, searchable. Oh, this is actually one right here. You can click around, pretty cool. Even got a little thumbs up, thumbs down on the bottom. Was this article helpful? No, it was helpful. And even some like kind of analytics. And all that just comes from this, pages inside of Notion, which is super simple to build out content inside of. You get the whole thing, 20 bucks a month. Pretty cool, right? So you can build out that help desk content inside of Notion. Your whole team can contribute, make updates on your phone, keep all that stuff just inside of Notion. And it's all gonna update on your live website automatically. All that for just 20 bucks in a format that anyone can contribute to. So to learn more about this one, head over to gethapa.com. We talk about this a lot if you follow Launch. We love tools, but we don't always love switching between 100 different channels. Previously, Launch now. Their solution to having too many apps is to add another app. And I know, when I first saw one of these about six months ago, but I'm getting there. Well, here's a tool to help with just that. It's called Texts. The idea is rather than sending messages across 10 different apps, Texts is gonna give you a single messaging interface that connects with messaging of all kinds. Sounds great in theory, right? Well, here's a list of the messaging channels they support right now. iMessage, SMS, WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, ugh, IRC, Slack, and Discord DMs. All of that in a single app. If you're not sold at this point, so this one has been kind of operating in stealth mode for the last year or so with a massive wait list. So getting your hands on it, trying it out has been difficult. But Chris Messina recently shared his experience getting up to speed with texts on Twitter. It looks every bit as exciting as I'd hoped. So he's using it on Mac OS here, but it's for Windows as well. And it's super simple. So you just connect all of your accounts. On the left hand side here, you're gonna get your inbox view. You can archive any of those messages and you've got an unread tab as well. This is kind of like bakes my noodle. Imagine having all of those things in a single place. Turning on do not disturb and muting all of those apps simultaneously. Browser extension? I didn't know that. So he says he's 10 minutes into this here and he's really liking it. This is with all of your accounts connected. You can see his messages on the left-hand side here from Twitter and iMessages. Then he's got a like keyboard shortcut pop up here. Then on the right-hand side, you've just got kind of the messages feed. I'm like in love with this. Big concern here obviously is security. Text says your data never actually hits their servers. So what they're doing is sitting on top of the data being provided by all these different APIs. They never actually see your data and that's it. Seems pretty cool. Looks like there's a monthly subscription fee for this. But this lets you wipe out, I mean, a number of apps that we use every day. So that is super exciting. To learn more about this one, head over to texts.com. One of my favorite dad rants is that virtually every meeting should be happening in a collaborative space. Don't make people sit there and watch you talk, which I do kind of see the irony in that now. So rather than just making people watch you talk, give them something to do, a way to roll up their sleeves and contribute to the meeting. Well, this just got easier than ever now thanks to Miro's Zoom app. A Zoom app, you say? Yes, Zoom recently released an SDK for building apps 
into Zoom itself. This means no more pointing people out to a separate service during your Zoom calls, probably reducing the number of screen shares you have to do. You can do it right inside of the Zoom window itself and everybody sees it, everybody can get involved. Miro specifically here, why is Miro a good idea for this? Well, in an in-office environment, meetings are a lot of throwing ideas up on a whiteboard, sticky notes, that sort of thing. And Miro is great at replicating that experience, but in a way that everyone can be involved in simultaneously. You can do some crazy things with Miro. I've seen live events with hundreds of people working on it simultaneously. And in our accountant community, we've done some pretty cool live events in there as well. Tools work, why they matter and why they should be a part. So I'm expecting Texas, Here's a link to a free workshop we did on future tech for accountants, where everybody was in a shared Miro space, asking questions, getting involved. Put a link to that in the video description. So I'm a big fan of this one, already using it myself. To learn more, head over to Miro.com. Start making those Zoom meetings a little more interactive. A super simple app here to make launching an online store to sell products or services easier than ever. They say it's like Shopify had a baby with type form, and I think it looks great. It's called Coco Cart. And you basically just set up a store in a familiar web form type interface. Now in 2021, virtually every business should have self-service sales on a website. Work with a restaurant client, how about frozen food products? Work with professional services, how about info products for their clients? The biggest barrier in the past has been setting up that sales channel, but today it's never been easier. Let's take a look at this one, and you can decide if you are cuckoo for Coco Cart. That's a reference people still get, right? Okay, no code, no app required. So you can see on the right-hand side here, looks a lot like a type form. But what they're doing is they're buying stuff, scheduling appointments, and that's it. That's the website. Made for local businesses, automate orders from social media. That's actually a great idea. Gives you a clear call to action in your social media post that takes them straight to a form where they can check out. Connects with Stripe, so you're gonna get all of the simplicity of people being able to check out with Stripe. That's kind of it. Super cheap too. You can actually use it for free, or they've got a premium version that's only five bucks per month. I love this. Every time this stuff gets easier, it becomes accessible to 10x more people, but oftentimes it takes an advisor to open the door. To learn more about this one, head over to cococart.co. That's it for this week. To get your mitts on more launches, head over to launchfa.com for the weekly newsletter and never miss another one of these because how fun is this? I'll see you next week. Just realized I'm still recording.